you guys, Buildzoid here with yet another PCB breakdown video. Uh, today we're doing a viewer requested card again. So this is a GTX 780 gigahertz edition. So yeah, this is I think Gigabyte's best GTX 780. For, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure on the specifics of that. Um, a long, long time ago the 780 series was. But anyway, um, we're, we're going to take a look at it because somebody requested it because they have the card. So let's see how much damage they could do to it. So first things first, identify the VRMs. Core voltage right over here. Um, so yeah, that's our core voltage VRM. And then over here we have the memory VRM. And I think that's just about all of them for this card. I'm being unnecessarily detailed with that highlight. Um, so yeah, so your core obviously feeds the GPU core. This feeds the you know black memory chips around the GPU. So all of these guys, because those are your memory chips. Um, yeah, and I don't think there's any other VRMs on this card because this right here isn't a VRM inductor. That's a filter. That's another filter. That's another filter. So basically, these are on the 12 volt rail, and they just smooth out ripple and any you know. Uh, current uh, current stability issues, so they're there to balance that. Um, they sort of act like capacitors, except these maintain current balance, whereas capacitors try to maintain voltage balance. So basically, capacitors try to hold a set voltage; these try to hold a set current. So basically, if the VRM suddenly you know asks for a ridiculously high amount of current, uh, the, it doesn't translate to the whole rest of your system. Uh, it doesn't get get that far. It just sort of, it, it basically gets to the choke and then the choke starts collapsing it. its magnetic field to source more current for the VRM. So that's, that's how those work. And then we have two more of those over here. So there is a lot of filters on this card and not a lot of VRMs. Um, so yeah, so core voltage is controlled by this chip over here. Uh, memory is controlled by that chip over there. Uh, we're not going to be doing memory vo mods, like memory voltage mods, just because uh, while the guy who requested the card was kind, was you know, awesome enough to provide uh, photos of the core voltage and uh, the and also the uh, core voltage controller, he did not get me a photo of the memory voltage controller. And really, I don't mind too much that he didn't do that. It's just, without it, I have absolutely no idea how you would go about volt modding the memory voltage, so we're not going to cover that. Um, we will cover everything else as usual, and we'll also do some power mods. So first things first, this you know this core voltage VRM over here, um, it's an 8 phase. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 inductors, and we got 1, 2, 3... Four, five, six, seven, eight power modules. Um, the voltage controller is a four two zero eight from NC, uh, NCP four two zero eight, which is an on semiconductor controller. It's kind of brain dead. Uh, it uses. It doesn't have I to C. Uh, it uses SVID or SVI or the other. There's like this other communication standard for voltage controllers that's used everywhere. It uses that one and doesn't have I to C at all. Uh, it also has a vid interface, um, so that's one other alternative way to volt mod it. But honestly, I would just always go with feedback pin mods because they're the easiest to do. Um, and I'm not 100% sure on how vid mods work. Um, that's the other thing because I've never dealt with a card where I could do a vid mod, so I never did a vid mod. So I don't know exactly how those work. Well, I know the theory of them. I've never used one, so. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to go explaining one to you until I've tested one myself. Um, so yeah, so this is a, you know, the voltage controller is a real 8 phase, and we have 8 phases, so this VRM is 1 PWM signal per phase. Uh, the voltage controller doesn't really have any advanced current sensing features or anything, but it at least has a uh, per phase PWM, so it should be reasonably capable of monitoring all of those phases properly enough. Um, though it's still by, like, yeah, it, it's a pretty old and kind of dumb voltage controller. There is much, much more advanced chips available. Um, on the other hand, that makes this one kind of easy to trick 
for things like voltage, core voltage, and all that. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about what, what the VRM can actually handle. So, these guys right here are alpha and omega power modules, uh, and these are rated for 60 amps going from, well, basically going up to 90 degrees at 300 kilohertz switching frequency and up to 70 degrees at 800 kilohertz switching frequency. So basically you have 60 amps per phase up to 90 degrees, well, more like up to 80, because while nobody runs any VRM at 800 kilohertz, because the efficiency at the, that high frequency is just terrible, um, I don't think anybody actually runs a VRM on a GPU at 300 kilohertz either, just because 300 kilohertz is a really, really low switching frequency. So usually, I think, like, usually GPU VRMs run in that 400 to 500 kilohertz range, so, you know, you could expect these to do 60 amps at 80 degrees. Um, so with eight phases, this VRM can deliver 480 amps maximum output current. Now, a GTX 780 at stock clocks pulls about 240 watts um, TDP, so about 200 amps uh, for the core. And that calculation is very, very rough um, because I'm completely ignoring the memory in that calculation. Like, we are just completely ignoring all of the memory chips. We're not talking about them at all. Um, whereas the memory chips actually chew up a significant amount of power, which is why they actually have their own VRM. Um, so, yeah, it's not going to be exact. It's going to be less than 200 amps, but it's just, you know, if you're going to... If you're going to round, round up, because if you overestimate how much current you need, at least you don't end up blowing out the VRM, because, hey, you accidentally, uh, you know, you actually overestimated how much current you would be pulling, so you didn't give it too much voltage and you didn't break the thing. So, yeah, that basically means Gigabyte gave us a 2.5, like, almost 2.5x, uh, you know, like, th this VRM can basically handle 2.5 uh, GTX 780s. So that's that's pretty cool. So basically you can shove a crap ton of voltage through this VRM. Uh, I'd probably feel safe all the way up to 1.6 volts. Um, I yeah, I'd, I'd say if you're if you have this card and you want to do, you know, dry ice cooling or whatever, go for it because this VRM can probably take uh, anything you'll throw at it. Um, and certainly if you stay between the 1.5 and 1.6 volts range, you should be fine. So, yeah, I, I think this, this VRM is perfectly good. It's not the most powerful, you know, VRM we've ever seen on a GTX 780, but it doesn't need to be, because it's plenty powerful in my opinion. It would definitely handle LN2 and dry ice. It might not break, you know, it might not be the fastest GTX 780 ever, but... It, it won't it won't let you down if you're just doing a first session or anything like that uh, as long as you you know don't go completely batshit crazy on the on the on the core voltage um, so moving over to the memory VRM now this thing is actually kind of anemic compared to the beast that is the core voltage um, so where the so where this is 60 amp power modules from alpha and Omega semiconductor and those are the z50. Z5066 is. These guys right here are 4901s from On Semiconductor, and their full model name is way too long, so we'll just refer, refer to them as the 4901s. Uh, so 4901s are rated for some really miserable capabilities. So uh, you can expect these to handle around 18 amps at 25 degrees ambient which is actually not really that bad on the high side. So 18 amps high side. Um, so, yeah, and there's two of them, so we have like 36A. And now do note that this is continuous current, 25 degree ambient rating. So this is one of like the worst case scenario ratings, really. It's, it's not going to be this quite this weak uh, as, if you have airflow over it or if you're running dry ice and the PCB is freezing through, then it, it won't be this weak. If you stick a big fan on the VRM, then again, it won't be at 36 amps. It'll handle more. But th this is like the, um, you know, this is the rating you can absolutely 100% certainty that it will not die at this. Uh, the other thing is also the high side doesn't isn't running continuous. It's running, uh, 
it, it's being switched on and off. So th this rating is very much like super, super safe. You could probably go 50% above this rating and still be fine. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter because I, I have no idea how to mod core voltage on the, on, well, no, no idea how to mod memory voltage on the GTX 780, uh, GTX 780 gigahertz edition because I think this is the voltage controller for memory. I think it could also be this thing, but that thing looks a little bit too stupid to pr produce two phases. So, yeah, so you have 36 amps for memory, which multiply by 1.5, that gives you about, that's like 36 plus 18, so that'd be like 40, 54. Four, yeah, around 54. Um, so that's like 54 watts for memory. So yeah, it, it's it's plenty powerful for like stock memory overclocking. Um, and again, you can't raise core voltage on it, so I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, also, the data sheet doesn't specify case temperatures because, because yeah, you know. So yeah, I, I'd say memory VRM is fine, and you're just kind of lucky that I don't know how to how to push more voltage through it. Though honestly, actually, with this being a 25 degree ambient rating and not a case temperature rating, you're you know, 25 degree ambient is, in my opinion, a terrible rating because it's ridiculous. Like it assumes it is it's no airflow, uh, no active cooling, no heat sinks, no nothing. Okay. It just assumes ambient air temperature of 25 degrees and no and natural convection. So basically, the only airflow the MOSFET gets for this testing scenario is the air that he, the MOSFET heats up rising away from the MOSFET. That's its. That's all the airflow it gets. Uh, whereas in a heatsink or any kind of normal, uh, you know, GPU application, it'll actually be running way cooler and so capable of handling a lot more current. But unfortunately, the data sheet w doesn't specify case temperatures because I don't know why. It just doesn't. It's all ambient, so yeah, that, that's too too bad. Um, so moving on to something that I do know, these are shunts. This is also a sh well, these guys are shunts. That's a shunt. Um, yeah, all of these are shunts. Uh, we all know what, at this point actually, I hope you all know what shunts do. And if you do know, then you also know that you need to short these guys out with, you know, liquid thermal, uh, liquid metal thermal paste. And I do believe solder actually would work on the 700 series cards because I don't think they had the fault protection that the 10 series cards have. Um, so yeah, you can short these out pretty much however you want. I still recommend the uh, liquid metal because you can remove it if you ever want to turn off your power mod. So short these out with liquid metal thermal paste and boom, you've just raised your power limit like a lot. So yeah, so that gets you some extra power limits. Uh, if you solder over them, then you'll probably have no power limit whatsoever and hopefully it won't trip that fault protection. If it does, then you just have to undo the soldering that you did. Um, so yeah, so that's your power mod for this card, and let's get on to the core vo to the core voltage. Ta-da! Thank you to uh, the guy who requested the card for providing this photo, because it actually is everything I ever needed. Um, let me just quickly pull up the data sheet for this thing, and where is it? There we go. So pin 16 on this thing is your uh, feedback pin. So that is, so you're basically looking at these down here because this dot, this dot is what you use to orient yourself on these voltage controllers. So dots in this corner, you're gonna be looking down from that dot. And you're gonna be looking for pin 16, which is this guy over here. And that's pin 16. Pin 16 is a voltage sensing pin. Uh, I I do believe I've explained in a, there is a video on the channel explaining how to do uh, volt, volt mods off of voltage sense pins. Uh, and if you still, if that video doesn't cover it properly, drop a comment down below. I'll either redo the video or walk you through it, like try my best to explain to you how the mod works. So yeah, this is the pin you need for extra core voltage. 
And you'll basically just trace that out and then go to town on it. So, yeah. Um, that should be everything. I'm looking into figuring out how to also limit this thing's... Uh, so this has a its own current limiting system, and I'm not sure if that is implemented or not. And I'm also not sure, because this, this one has a different current limiting system, like current sensing system, than anything I've ever seen before. So I'm not sure how that how you would go about disabling it. And because some of these voltage controllers are actually smart enough to realize there is no way that the VRM is running at zero amps, um, I'm not gonna tell, like, I'm not gonna theorize anything because you might just disable your card uh, for, yeah, which I don't want you doing. So we're not gonna cover that. If I had the card, I, you know, I could test it out and do whatever, but without the card in hand, I'm I'm not 100% certain how it would end up, like, what would end up happening. So, yeah. Uh, even though I could totally read it off of the data sheet, but that data sheet has 30 freaking pages, and I am very, very lazy, as I think everybody has realized at this point. So, yeah. Also, I don't think you'll actually need the current limiter on this, and if you do, then, you know, just draw... Like, if you somehow manage to still hit a power limit, just drop a comment down below, and I'll try to help you take the power limit off of this thing. Um, so, yeah. But I, I don't think that'll ever be necessary. Just don't think so. If you do the shunts, then that should be all the power sensing you need to take care of. This should be only configured to uh, trip OCP if, you, if you're about to blow out the VRM. I don't think it'll be set lower than that. So, yeah, I wouldn't worry about the current limit on this. So, yeah, that, that covers this, uh, this card. Um, if I haven't thanked bittech.net for this photo, well, thanks to them for providing this photo here. Um, it's not quite high res enough for my, you know, for, to, usual, to satisfy me, but it, it, it works. So, thanks to them for providing well, not providing for uploading a photo this good. Um, and yeah, that's that for this video. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, and if you'd like to see more actually hardcore overclocking content come out faster, and by more actually hardcore con content, blah, 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 more actually hardcore overclocking content, that isn't more PCB breakdowns, because I can pretty much do these forever off of thin air. Um, as long as I can afford to pay internet, I can make these. Um, so, yeah, but if you'd like to see other more exciting projects that aren't just staring at photos, there is a support link down in the description. You can click on that. That'll take you to another, to the blog where there is a Patreon link and shirts and maybe I'll add PayPal again, but right now there's some issues with PayPal. So, for now, it's Patreon only. So yeah, that's if you want to help out with actually hardcore overclocking. Thank you for watching, and see you... Whoa, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a live stream, because I'm kind of tired of live streaming. So, yeah, well, see you whenever next time is, and goodbye.